Evening, it's good to have you with us. The news cycle never rests and neither do we. So a big focus on energy in this hour. And so let's start with this. Stage four power cuts are in effect until 10 o'clock tonight. And they'll resume once again at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. But it seems there's some light in the power supply darkness that has consumed us all for so many years. A multi-billion rand wind farm has been launched in the Northern Cape. The Rochefeld wind farm was awarded preferred bidder status in round four of South Africa's renewable energy independent power producers procurement program. A mouthful there. All right, let's take you to ENCA's Ronald Masinda, who attended the launch as, and has got details for us. So a big milestone, uh, Ronald, in the fight to end the energy crisis. Tell us a bit more about this plant. To us, well, the Rochefort uh, wind farm is expected to bring thousands of South Africans renewed hope of uh, reliable energy supply. It is a wind farm that takes up to 140 megawatts. Uh, this wind farm started at around uh, 2018 in April and was completed recently and uh, around uh, over 800 people were employed uh, during this process and the majority of which came from areas such as the Great Karoo and also in the Northern Cape. Uh, people uh, who were part of the workforce are people from Mickey's Fontaine, uh, Lanesburg and Sutherland where we are. But what we also heard uh, earlier during the launch is that uh, around or nearly 50,000 people are expected to benefit from this project. The project itself is uh, a project where a company that is from Cape Town and is run predominantly by uh, Italian. And uh, one person that we spoke to, Luca Silva, had this to say. Uh, as said, uh, as we built in the last uh, four years, um, we had a lot of uh, challenge during uh, construction, as uh, or uh, normally in, uh, in all the projects in the world. In, but uh, in this case, it was mainly COVID-19 uh, creating a bit of uh, uh, issue. The plant, as said, is uh, 147 megawatt of uh, nameplate capacity. Uh, there are a bit of losses before to arrive to the substation, where all the 147 megawatt are evacuated. We have a total of 47 turbines. Each of the turbine is around 3, 3.15 megawatt for a total set of 147. Uh, the, uh, we are in a, wa quite a um, nice place in terms of wind. As you can see, today is a very sunny and windy day, so the production is going to be good. Uh, the plant uh, is evacuating about uh, 620 gigawatt hour every year, so it's a quite uh, nice uh, uh, production from, uh, from our side. And Ronald, we know that you know, to describe the Northern Cape as the economic hub of the country would be you know, quite inaccurate. But it would seem that there's expectation that that project and perhaps others could boost that province's economy. What are you hearing about that? So when we were speaking uh, to a number of people who were talking about some of the projects that are um, up and coming here in the Northern Cape, they were regarding the Northern Cape as the renewable uh, energy capital of South Africa. Uh, there's about five more projects uh, similar to the ones that we saw and what these projects are also doing to us is educating uh, many people giving them skills during this process uh, as i mentioned earlier over 800 people were part of uh, the one uh, project here in Rochefort farm but also what we are expecting is a number of uh, other initiatives within uh, this time period but one of the disadvantages with the Rochefort uh, uh, wind farm as mentioned by uh, the gentleman that we heard from uh, Lucas Silva is that uh, the time that it took it took quite a bit of time and that was due to the pandemic where uh, tools had to be downed but uh, there's a lot of optimism that uh, the turnaround time for the upcoming five projects will be much quicker. We, who we also heard from was the Deputy Minister uh, for Mineral and Energy, um, Dr. Nobu Hlen And she spoke uh, with uh, a number of other dignitaries. Unfortunately, uh, Minister Guatemantasha was not available. He has been deployed by President Cyril Ramaphosa to attend to urgent matters in KwaZulu-Natal following the floods. But this is what uh, Nobu Tlenkabeni had to say earlier. 
what is happening here, uh, we are trying by all means as the government to do what we call as the energy mix, to, to come up with projects for renewables and trying to reduce our carbon footprint. As you know that we have made some commitments in terms of um, uh, COP26. So this project is going to provide 49,200 communities with electricity and the project is having 147 megawatts so this is going to be a milestone in terms of ensuring energy uh, supply and energy security as you know that we are struggling with energy there is um, load shedding and stuff so these are the programs and initiatives that we are coming up with we are coming up with as the government and we'll be rolling out all these uh, programs to all the provinces since I indicated uh, when I was presenting my speech that we are moving towards bid window 5 we are going to be um, uh, requesting uh, some proposals all right, Ron, thank you for that. So 147 megawatts is not really, you know, the equivalent of even a unit at the problem child power station like Tutuga, uh, for example. But I suppose the idea is that if you've got all these smaller projects, all of them feeding into the grid, imagine if you've got uh, the equivalent of five of those, you already are getting somewhere by way of adding to the energy uh, situation in the country. Uh, lastly, Ronald, on a completely unrelated uh, tone. It's one of the coldest weekends we've had since the beginning of the year and you being you, you decided you were going to be in the coldest area, coldest part of the country in Sutherland. Uh, and I imagine that you're suffering quite a bit of misery there uh, in Sutherland. <laughs> yes indeed, Tulas. Well, I can tell you what uh, the locals uh, told me earlier this morning. I mean, the sun is out, Tulas, but I'm freezing where I'm standing. The locals were saying that it was uh, minus seven degrees. That's how bad the situation <laughs> is here. Yeah? And uh, doing a bit of research around uh, Sutherland, we've been told, or I've been told, that uh, temperatures can drop in winter to below minus 20 degrees I and mean, that's how bad the situation is yeah. I'm led to believe that to us that uh, the altitude and the clear skies uh, are largely contributing uh, to that but uh, tomorrow I will be doing a focus on that particular matter speaking to residents all right, fantastic. Stay warm, Ronald. You should be wearing a coat, actually, and a scarf and all of these other things, because that was my first instinct when I heard you are in Sutherland. I, I don't have scientific backup to it, but from just observing uh, the weather on TV, I actually believe Sutherland is the coldest part of South Africa. But I stand to be corrected, of course.